Hi folks, this is all the fruit. And here I have the green houses of the Botanic Garden of Sofia. Which one? Because there are two. This is the Botanic Garden of the Academy of Sciences. It's not the one in the city center, but the ones uh, in the suburbs on the foothills of the Mitosha Mountains. I know that some of you don't like my botany garden videos so much, but botany gardens are basically the biggest collections of rare plants, and that's also where you find the rare fruit. So if you're a fruit hunter, you cannot skip the botany gardens. Let's see what we have here. Well, here they have a collection of coffee. Nice. Behind it, I, I've seen this plant, but I don't know what it is. Well, the greenhouses are quite old. I was here about 30 years ago. They are quite old and cramped because those people, of course, they want to collect as many things as possible. So even now in summer, I thought that they would take out some of the palms, but no, even in mid-July, this stuff, which I think is supposed to be taken out, is actually still indoors. Lots and lots of stuff. Aloes, although the aloe collection is in another greenhouse. Palms, yeah, those palms. Those things are definitely meant to be outside. Well, at least they have beautiful wooded, uh, wooded, uh, well, what would you call this? <laughs> vats, wooded vats to keep the plants in it. They are still producing and uh, introducing them. Those here are brand new. Well, some of the other ones are decades old. I totally appreciate that. Finally, something fancy in Bulgaria. They are still producing fancy wooden vats. Yeah, but this cramped stuff, this is definitely meant to be taken out in bitter orange. It's definitely meant to be outdoors. Oh, but I guess that's why they don't take them outdoors. The old vats are already so derelict that you just cannot move them. You have to be happy for them to be in one piece. I guess that's why they're introducing new ones, but good. At least for the big ones, they're not introducing the boring plastic things, but they're replacing them with new vets. Oh my god, this one is basically just being held together by the roots. Beautiful palm collection. What is this thing? Not many fruits right now, but this plant here has fruits. What is it? Oh. <sighs> That means pro probably R punctata, maybe, or is it P punctata? Could it be Rivinia punctata? It looks a bit like a Rivinia. No idea. I don't like reading those little labels. So many botanic gardens have just the little labels. Why not? Nice big ones like those here, like this here, Zapindos, Mukorazi. Uh, this Zapindos Mukorazi is not looking well. I would, I would say it's dying. Or something like this, Citrus Exorantium Bitter Orange. Those are nice big labels. Let's see what else we can find. I'm sure there are tons and tons of rare and interesting things here for example a pitanga even with ripe edible fruits but just tiny labels on them ah, a nice big ficus this must be quite old ah, ficus roxburgi yeah this can have good fruits if you have the proper wasps to pollinate it it's one of the more important cultivated figs couple couple conifers which need to be in the greenhouses actually a conifers are most dominant in in uh, in subarctic regions but actually their diversity is biggest in the tropics and subtropics where they don't show a lot of dominance but they are there and they are quite diverse oh some nice bananas well musa cuminata buzovalbiziana Dwarf Cavendish, yeah, this could be the Dwarf Cavendish in this. Musa Paradisiaca, well, some sort of banana. Oh, yeah, there's even a bunch over there. A young bunch of bananas. 
Nice, so they have bananas, they have monstera. Monstera is also a very good fruit plant. Ficus elastica, beautiful. Just, yeah, more botanic gardens should invest in more of those big labels instead of just the tiny ones. Carnivorous plants. Yeah, I definitely like this place. What I don't like so much is the lack of labels, but yeah. One cannot have everything, and it's not this thing. Uh, this problem is not limited to this botanic garden. Most botanic gardens have it. Here's some little passion flower. Oh God, look at this one here. The vet has completely disappeared, and the thing is really just only being held together by the by the roots. Amazing. Yeah, this big palm collection is definitely meant to be outside in summer, but until they are not replaced by new vets, you cannot take them out. It will just destroy what's, what's left of the coherence of the soil. Ah, oh, I thought this should be Chamerops humilis, but it's not very spiny. Ah, it is Chamerops humilis. Look, it is a Chamerops humilis. Ooh, without... Basically without spines. I mean, I can feel the spines along the petiole, but basically if you do this to a Chamerops humilis, you get skewered on those spines, and here almost no spines. An almost spineless variety of the European dwarf palm. This is interesting. Pomelo, Phoenix, I would say this is a Dactylifera back there. Even the small greenhouses are open. I really appreciate that. They have just one or two greenhouses for uh, propagation and stuff which are not open to the public. Everything else is open to the public. So even though those botanic gardens for decades experienced, oh, here's some ficus, experienced a severe, a really crippling and killing lack of funds, they still manage to maintain a huge collection and yeah, you can even go into all those little greenhouses. Look at that. Somebody here is propagating, somebody here is propagating outdoor stuff and seems to be really successful. Look at this tiny landscape made out of outdoor conifers, uh, maidenhair fern, and lots and lots of labels. This looks almost like those landscapes we used to make for our children's railroads. Beautiful. Ah, here a lot more propagation, so even a lot of the propagation greenhouses seem to be open to the public. They just stuck this lemon in there. I wonder what's gonna happen with it. Nice citrus collection. Here's some strawberry trees. I was in here, part of it is an orchid collection. Not many fruits right now, even in mid, even in end July. Huh. And since we are in Bulgaria, of course, they have a nice tomato and pepper collection, which is very useful during the lunch break. But, yeah, I totally approve of that. I also would do it like this. Ah, here are silverberries. I wonder if they grow outdoors in Sofia. Would be nice to have fruits in early spring, way before the cherries. A geranium collection, yeah, those are also very popular in Bulgaria. What do we have here? I, I haven't been in here yet. Looks like a nice tropical greenhouse. Found a couple interesting fruit trees outside. Well, the citrus collection doesn't seem to be in one place. It seems they just put the stuff wherever there is place and wherever they have the right conditions, like those things under this... Um, plastic uh, to shade them a little bit other things out in the sun those huh, those strawberries are facing south interesting a wild strawberry collection nice those are facing south no protection at all but the citruses and a lot of those orchids well i guess the orchids are rainforest orchids but also the citruses they get this protection here uh, Beautiful. Well, of course, in midsummer it's not citrus season. Very few fruits. I don't know how big or important their citrus collection is. 
But yeah, it's amazing that even the East European socialist countries, especially the Soviet Union, were quite active in the breeding of citruses. So they have a lot of interesting varieties which come out of this area. Huh. I did find a lot of fruit trees, now I cannot find them anymore. Well, here, some sweet potatoes. Oh, look at this. This is some rare solanum. This is some interesting eggplant. Which one is it? Uh, prior. I don't know what this is. Nai. Jult. Nor. Noistvo. Uh, no idea, folks. Marizzi. Belli. Well, I don't know. Definitely no Latin name here. Just some Bulgarian names. Yellow something. Let's see what's... Oh, here they... <laughs> Zolanum. Okay, at least something Latin. Yeah, it's a Zolanum. I wonder... It looks a little bit like the Dayak eggplant of Borneo, but what Zolanum is this? Strange. I really would like to know what Zolanum this is. This bay leaf doesn't seem to be doing too well. Huh. Geranium sanguineum, or maybe this is some rare related Bulgarian species. There are, a couple, there are a couple species from Bulgaria which are just surviving in such little pots of um, in botanic gardens around the country, basically when some quarries or roads or whatever have destroyed their uh, natural habitat back then. They were not repatriated to a different place, but if they were lucky, some botanic garden would save the last couple of things. This also looks like a Zolanaceae. This looks like the dwarf tamario. Do you think it's a dwarf tamario, but a puny plant with just one single fruit? I think it's a dwarf tamario. Solanum, what was it, abutiloides or what? Well, looks like the dwarf tamario for sure. Pity there is no, there is no gardener here. I found the gardener in a different greenhouse, but there is nobody here and so I cannot ask them. Hmm. Here we have a couple nice fruit trees. This should be tamarind. Ah, no, this is an acacia, acacia caro. Ah, yes, of course, here are the, the spines are quite small for caro, but here, for example, are a couple big ones. Yes, yes, I take everything back, it's acacia caro. Here is some carob. Bay leaf, they seem to like their bay leaf, but it, uh, is it really bay leaf? No. Here, at least some of those things seem to be avocados. Oh, folks, I want big labels and again palms. It seems there is often not a lot of order in this collection because they uh, were lacking funds. I guess they were stuffing everything just wherever it could fit. Well, even better stuff botanic gardens have, have this or better funded botanic gardens have this. Yeah, here it seems. This is a macadamia. Nice. Protease macadamia, yes. Nice. A lot of those plants don't seem to be doing too well. I guess a lot of them need new pots and new soil and stuff, but yeah. I talked to the cashier and she complained they really don't have enough gardeners. At least the greenhouses are kind of, well, oh, this is beautiful. At least the greenhouses are kind of well preserved outside. It's even worse. Ah, here a kiwi. Normal kiwi, Actinidia sinensis. Yeah, at least the greenhouses are more or less well preserved despite the stuff being stuffed everywhere where it can fit. Uh, the, the outdoor part is in a much worse condition, but I will look at it in more detail soon. This looks almost like a kiwi berry. A hibiscus collection. No, they don't look well. They don't look. They don't look too healthy here. Maybe they need bigger pots or something. Uh, those hibiscuses, and also a giant chili collection. Look at that. It's starting here, 
lots of different chilies, different colors, different uh, shapes, different sizes, and I bet different tastes, but no, I will not do a chili tasting video now. Here are a couple geraniums, bougainvillea, more geraniums, but I also found a lot more chilies over here. It's amazing. So many chilies, chilies, chilies. Here the collection is going on and on. Nymphoides peltata, here some nymphaea species. An iris collection, here yeah, we have a lot of endemic and subendemic irises in Bulgaria. Those could be some of them or they could be introduced. Lots and lots and lots of chilies. Here again some Eleagnus. What do we have here? Some raspberries. Oh, this seems to be the Egyptian onion. Beautiful. Ah, some uh, Rubus laciniatus here, and also they seem to have quite a large strawberry collection here. Well, strawberry cultivation in Bulgaria has been, even commercial strawberry cultivation has been quite big for a long time. Well, let's do one more greenhouse and then we finish this video. I don't want to show you everything over there. There are a lot more greenhouses and a couple other interesting fruit trees. What did I see there? I saw some Casimiroa. This is some this is some exotic walnut, this is a checker tree, and some wild apple. Let's see, so a couple more interesting fruit trees. Well, as you can see, the greenhouses in the area around them, you can basically walk around for hours and you will find interesting stuff here. A star apple, Chrysophyrum kainito, here different zorbos, uh, one is, uh, uh, this one is, uh, nah. Sorbus aucuparia, Sorbus aria, a collection of tiny ornamental um, conifer bonsais. Well, not all of this needs to go into the greenhouses in winter, but most of it. Beautiful collection, folks. If you are in Sofia, just take your time, take half a day and go into the botanic garden of the Academy of Sciences of Bulgaria in the suburbs. You will not be disappointed. This is a white supporter here in this pot. Yeah, I'll just walk back through one of the greenhouses if you still want to stay with me. Here on the right side I'm skipping a lot more greenhouses also with a couple interesting fruit trees inside. It's just too big for one video and I noticed that most people don't stay till the end but they kind of prefer to see the stuff for themselves. Yeah, here we have the succulents, nice big collection. I guess they are selling some of them, three, four, five. I guess those will be the prices, not some numbers. Uh, some Litops collection, beautiful cacti, lots and lots of cacti. Beautiful, beautiful botanic garden. As I said, I haven't been here for the last 30 years or so. Actually, since it was opened, I was here only once before it was opened. Oh, Pancha Robusta, good fruit tree. Yeah, definitely come and visit this stuff. Apart from that, stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful Sofia Botanic Garden. And of course, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.